Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ned over at My Philippine Dreams. Today is Thursday, July 25th, 2019, the first day of the rest of our lives. This past week, I published a video on my Canon laser printer blowing up when I plugged it into the wall socket here. As background, I had noted that the data plate on my MF232W, that's the Canon model, stated it was appropriate for 120 volt power, but that Best Buy had said that it would work on 220. So having received the printer that day in a Balik Bayon box, I dutifully plugged it in to see if Best Buy was right or not. Doing something like this is called a smoke test and is not generally recommended. The result was the printer powered on, but after about five seconds, something towards the back blew and a column of white smoke drifted out of the ventilation slats. Not good. Now, what I failed to note at the end of the video was that I later plugged the printer back into the 220 volt line and that it powered on. It did note that there was a CMOS battery error. It stated that the battery was drained and that the date and time function would not work. I then copied a document with it, connected it wirelessly to my computer and printed up a Word document. Success, it worked on 220 volts. This despite the fact that the data plate only said 120. Weird, huh? Well, not really. All right, let's go into some wrong information. Before recounting the story, let me address one critically important issue. A number of people stated that I simply should have gotten a $10 voltage converter off of Amazon to lower the voltage from 220 to 110. It was a good suggestion and one that was headed in the right direction, but what's important to note is that some devices such as air conditioners, kitchen appliances, power tools, laser printers, actually require a higher operating rate. That is, if you have a 400 watt laser printer, such as what I have, you should have a 1200 to 1600, preferably a 2000 watt step down transformer. These big ugly devices cost around 100 bucks by themselves on Amazon. Gold Star is one of the brands there. Um, and that would have cost more than the actual printer itself. Plus, by then, I was fairly certain that the printer would work on 220 volts and we'll get into that in a minute. So if you leave this article or this video with nothing else, hold on to this. There is a difference between small cheap voltage converters and big expensive and inefficient, equally inefficient, step down or step up transformers. Okay, so I purchased my Canon MF232W laser printer from Best Buy for 99 bucks when I was in the, back in the US this year. When I arrived, I set it up and tested all the functions. Pleased with the ensuing results, I then noticed a, something a bit disconcerting on the back data plate. The printer appeared to only be compatible with 120 to 127 volts. Ruh row. Concerned, I messaged Best Buy and they promptly replied that the printer would work on 220. They also suggested that I contact Canon customer support. I did that and after being elevated to supervisory technical support, Canon said that they were pretty sure it would work on 220 volts. The tech went on to explain that most electrical devices have been able to automatically switch between 110 volts and 240 volts for quite some time. He said that international companies don't want to source multiple power supplies for different regions, so they just have one PSU that can auto adjust to anything in that 110, 240 range, and also between 50 and 60 cycles for the frequency. Although the pretty sure part kind of worried me, his explanation made sense. I then did some research online and it backed it up. Cool. And that would also explain why the U.S. online printer manual for the MF232 said 120 to 127 volts, and the Asian version says 220 to 240. With all that in mind, then, I was basically fairly certain that the printer would work in the Philippines, which is 220 volts and 60 cycles, or at least I was over generally over 90% sure. Uh, 70 days after I shipped my Balik Bayon box to myself in the Philippines, it arrived via UMAC. I love those guys, thank you. It was delivered right to my doorstep. I did a short video on that and then set the printer up on the porch. I plugged it in and it powered right up. Five seconds later, again, however, something popped in the cannon and the white smoke coalesced. And this was about a second after I said burst in the video, so the timing couldn't have been better. I later plugged the printer back in and everything worked except the CMOS battery. 
I popped it open and saw that a small capacitor on the CMOS circuit had blown. I consulted a Filipino-American neighbor who knows electronics. I don't know electronics. Um, and he also has a soldering iron. We picked up a 70 peso replacement cap at Sunny Electric. Also love them guys and he replaced it. It hasn't blown again and I don't know why it did in the first place. Probably because I didn't get an a have it on an AVR. To me it just made for an amusing video. The response, oh boy, there was a big response over this. People really got whipped into a tizzy over this video for some reason. I mean, peeps really, really got heated. Finally, I should have realized and noted at the end that the printer still worked, and I wasted a bunch of time actually explaining to individual commenters to calm down and that the printer still worked. Uh, the conclusion that I have is, unlike what is noted in the comments section of the video, you can't always trust what is on the data plate, although you should. You should, and you should do lots of research also. You should, tr you should trust what's on the data plate, especially when it's a $100 device. Uh, you also can't expect to use a cigarette pack sized voltage converter when actually what you will need is a step up or step down transformer. And finally, what I should have noted in the video, and this is critically important as well, it is always, always wise to use an AVR, which is an automatic voltage regulator, when you're in the Philippines. Electricity here is notoriously dirty, and a good AVR will keep your precious devices safe. And this, again, might have also been why the CMOS capacitor blew. And as you see in the video, when I finally did plug it back in, I made damn sure it was running through an AVR. If you want to read the full article on this, there's a link down in the video description box to the article that I wrote up. Until next time, keep dreaming of those puppies and rainbows. Bye. Oh, and if anything is wrong in this, please let me know so I can correct it. Because again, I don't know electronics or electrical stuff, so I could be wrong on some things. Hey, if you consider our work to be of any value, consider supporting us on Patreon. If you're a Patreon, you get a free copy of my ebook, and we do monthly Google Hangouts. So consider doing that, if you would please.